Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the third lecture on vibrational spectroscopy. In the last lecture, we learned about the energies of different vibrational levels. So we saw the energy E v can be written as v plus half h nu, where v is the vibrational quantum number. So, in terms of wave numbers, we can write nu bar v equals v plus half nu bar. So, in order to obtain a vibrational spectrum, transitions should happen from one vibrational energy level to another. The vibrational transitions depend on the selection rules. In today's lecture, we will discuss the vibrational selection rules of harmonic oscillators and the effect these selection rules have on the vibrational spectrum. To determine the vibrational selection rules, we have to follow the same approach as we had for the rotational system. A vibrational transition will happen if the transition moment integral is non-zero. So, the transition moment integral should not be equal to zero. In other words, we have to evaluate this transition moment integral to identify the selection rules. Before looking into the integral, let us first state the selection rules. So, we have a gross selection rule. So, the gross selection rule states that the gradient of the dipole moment with respect to the equilibrium position must be non-zero or we can say d mu d x not equal to zero. So, here mu is the dipole moment. So, we can write mu as the dipole moment and x is the displacement from the equilibrium position that is x equals r minus r equilibrium. This means that the dipole must change with displacement at the equilibrium position. As the vibration goes through the equilibrium position, the dipole moment of the molecule must be changing. But as we will see later, this does not mean that the molecule has to have a permanent dipole moment as we saw in the case of rotational spectroscopy. The second selection rule, we can write this as the specific selection rule. So, the specific selection rule says that the change in the vibrational quantum number that is delta v must be plus or minus 1. Thus, transitions can happen from v equals 0 to v equals 1. Also, a transition can happen from v equals 1 2 v equals 2. So, these are the allowed transitions. 
On the other hand, transitions cannot happen from v equals 0 to v equals 2 or let us say v equals 1 to v equals 3. So, these are the transitions that are not allowed. In other words, we can only have transitions between adjacent vibrational levels. So, now let us try to find out where these two selection rules come from. We know that the dipole moment changes with bond length. We know that dipole moment is charge times distance. So, we can write this as charge times distance. So, if the bond length changes during the vibration, that means there is a change in the distance. So, the dipole moment will change. We can expand the dipole moment that is mu around the equilibrium position as a function of the displacement r minus r equilibrium or x. In other words, we can expand the dipole moment as a Taylor series. So, we did the Taylor series expansion for the potential in the last lecture. So, now we will do the Taylor series expansion for the dipole moment. So, we can write mu the dipole moment is given by mu e. So, the dipole moment at the equilibrium position is the permanent dipole moment of the molecule which is represented by mu e. Then we have the second term that is d mu d r at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium and we have the other higher terms. So, we will ignore all the higher order terms and will only consider the first two terms in the expansion as shown here. So, now if we substitute this expression for dipole moment in the transition moment integral. So, we can write the transition moment integral, we can write this as integration psi double prime star, then we have the dipole moment operator, then we have psi prime d tau. So, this becomes or let us make this as double prime to go with the convention and let us make this as the single prime. So, this transition moment integral, if we put the expression of this expanded dipole moment here, we can write psi prime star, then we will put the expression for mu that is mu e plus d mu d r r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium, then we have psi double prime d tau and we have plus dot 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 the higher terms. So, here we can expand this and write as psi prime star mu e psi double prime d tau plus psi prime star d mu d r at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium psi double prime d tau plus the higher order terms. So, the mu e is the dipole moment at the equilibrium position and so 
this mu e is a constant. So, we can take it out of the first integral and we can write this as mu e times psi prime star psi double prime d tau. So, because we can take out the mu e, this is because it does not affect the wave function. In the second term, the gradient of the dipole moment that is this term d mu d r at r equilibrium with respect to the displacement is also a constant. So, we can take this term out of the second integral. So, this becomes d mu d r at r equilibrium integration psi prime star r minus r equilibrium psi double prime d tau. So, the displacement term that is r minus r equilibrium however, cannot be taken out of the integral as wave functions themselves are function of the displacement. So, the integral is also a function of the displacement. So, we know that for a vibrational transition to happen, the transition moment integral has to be non-zero. So, the first term is 0, the mu equilibrium is the dipole moment at the equilibrium position or it is the permanent dipole moment of the molecule. So, mu equilibrium can either be 0 or non-zero depending on the molecule, but the permanent dipole moment being 0 or non-zero does not make any difference. This is because the integral associated with the permanent dipole moment in the first term of the right hand side is 0. Without going into the details, vibrational wave functions are the solutions to the harmonic oscillator Schrodinger equation. These wave functions are orthogonal to one another. So, integrals like these what we have here that is psi prime and psi double prime, we have two different states. So, the integrals like these are always 0 as there is a change in the vibrational state from let us say psi prime to psi double prime. So, let us focus on the second term in the right hand side. If a vibrational transition needs to happen the second term has to be non-zero. In other words, both the parts of the second term has to be non-zero. So, we have two parts, we have this gradient term and then we have the integral. So, the gradient of the dipole moment with respect to displacement has to be non-zero and the integral has to be non-zero. Now, you can see the first part being non-zero is the gross selection rule. Thus, we can understand that solving this integral should provide us with the specific selection rule that is this should give us delta v equals plus minus 1. So, let us revisit the first selection rule that the dipole moment has to change as a function of the displacement from the equilibrium position. So, for homonuclear diatomic molecules like we have let us say hydrogen, nitrogen or oxygen, this cannot occur. The dipole moment of the homonuclear diatomic molecule is 0, no matter what the bond length is. That is, during vibration, both its dipole moment and the gradient of the dipole moment remain 0. Thus, homonuclear diatomic molecules cannot exhibit an infrared spectrum or we can say homonuclear diatomic molecules, they are IR 
inactive. So this does not mean that the homonuclear diatomics do not have the vibrational levels. It just means it cannot use these vibrational levels for electromagnetic radiation or to interact with electromagnetic radiation to excite a molecule from one vibrational state to another. This is similar to the case where a homonuclear diatomic molecule cannot be excited from one rotational level to another using microwave radiation. But those vibrational or rotational levels exists and their energies can be obtained by solving the Schrodinger equation. For heteronuclear diatomic molecules, so heteronuclear diatomic molecules, the dipole moment changes during vibration. As dipole moment is just charge time distance, as the bond length changes, the dipole moment changes. So, heteronuclear diatomic molecules have infrared spectra and thus these molecules are IR active. In other words, carbon monoxide or CO which is a heteronuclear diatomic molecule when dissolved in a solvent shows a band in the infrared. So now, let us consider a molecule like CO2 or carbon dioxide. CO2 as we know does not have a permanent dipole moment, but is IR active. We might expect that this molecule will not have a dipole moment while vibrating, but as we will see later more than one kind of vibration can occur in this molecule carbon dioxide. The symmetric stretching mode where both the CO bonds are either expanding or contracting during the vibration at the same time is IR inactive as the dipole moment is 0 at every point during vibration. In other words, we can say there is no change in the dipole moment with respect to the displacement from the equilibrium position. But during the asymmetric stretch, that is one CO bond gets smaller while the other CO bond gets larger, the dipole moment changes during the vibration, making the mode higher active. There is another mode that is the bending mode of CO2 which we will discuss later, this mode is also an IR active mode. So now, we know from the specific selection rule that delta V equals plus minus 1. So let us look into a vibrational transition, let us say from V to V plus 1. So if we calculate the change in energy, so, we can write delta E V that is the change in energy during the transition from V to V plus 1. This is E of V plus 1 minus E of V. So, this is V plus 1 plus half H nu minus V plus half H nu. So, we can write this as V plus half H nu plus H nu minus V plus half H nu. So, these two will cancel what we have is delta E equals H nu. In wave number units, we can write delta 
mu bar is delta E by H C that is H nu by H C. So, this is nu by C equals nu bar. So, in other words the change in energy gives the energy associated in the spectral line. So, for harmonic oscillators as the energy levels are equally spaced all transitions will exhibit a spectral feature at the same frequency that is nu bar. As the spectral lines associated with every transition will occur at the same frequency. In other words, we can say that they will lie on top of one another in the higher spectrum. So, we should expect a single spectral line. You think this situation to be much simpler than the rotational spectrum where we had many many equally spaced lines. So, now we have stated that transitions from V to V plus 1 will require the same energy that means, it can be any value of V to V plus 1 it will require the same energy. The associated frequency or wavelength for transition falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. This frequency when matches with the frequency or wavelength of light during the light matter interaction, the transition takes place from one vibrational level to another. Thus, we can consider IR spectroscopy as a form of resonance spectroscopy. At room temperature, let us say 300 Kelvin, the thermal energy at room temperature is given by K T. As IR spectral transition is commonly reported in wave numbers, the thermal energy is approximately K T by H C and if we put the values here, then what we will get is approximately this is 200 wave number, but most vibrational wave numbers are significantly greater than 200 wave numbers or in other words this I r frequency in wave numbers we can say they are in the order of 1000 wave numbers. Thus from Boltzmann distribution we can write n v equals 1 by n v equals 0 this ratio as we know is given by e to the power minus h c nu bar by k t. So, if we put the values we can write e to the power minus the value of h is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34. Then we have the speed of light that is c times 10 to the power 10 times nu bar we will put 1000 wave numbers divided by k that is 1.38 times 10 to the power minus 23 times the temperature this is 300 Kelvin and if we do this the value that you get is e to the power minus 4.8. So, this becomes 0 0.008. In other words, the population of V equals 1 is approximately 1 percent of the ground state V equals 0. So, almost all the molecules will be in their vibrational ground state initially. Hence, the dominant spectral transition is V equals 0 to V equals 1. So, the dominant spectral transition is V equals 0 to V equals 1 and this transition is known as the fundamental transition. 
with the increase in temperature, the population of V equals 1 will increase, but in harmonic approximation, all these lines have the same frequency. That is, if the transition starts from V equals 0 or V equals 1, and thus the spectrum is also a single line. So, now the question is, do we get a single line from the experimental IR spectrum? We will discuss this in the next lecture. So, now let us look into some problems. The first question we have is which of the following molecules are IR active? So, we have four choices H2, F2, HCl and CO or carbon monoxide. So, as we can see H2 and F2, they are homonuclear diatomic molecules. On the other hand, HCl and carbon monoxide are heteronuclear diatomic molecules. So, we know, so HCl and CO, they will be IR active. So, the right answers are C and D. So, let us look into the next question. What is the difference in the IR activity of the symmetric stretching modes of CO2 and NO2? So, we discussed in the class this carbon dioxide, the symmetric stretching mode is both the CO bonds are either lengthening or they are contracting at the same time. So, because this is a linear molecule, there is no change in dipole moment with respect to the displacement from the equilibrium bond length. So, this is IR inactive. On the other hand, when we have NO2, so this is like a bent molecule and as this molecule is bent, even though the stretching happens in a symmetric fashion, that means both the NO bonds are stretching at the same time, there is a change in the dipole moment with respect to displacement. So, here we can write del mu del x is not equal to 0. So, NO2 st symmetric stretching mode will be IR active. So, we have the last question here for today. So, what is the fraction of the HCl molecules in the V equals 1 state and V equals 0 state? So, we have to find N V equals 1 divided by N V equals 0 and the temperature we have to find this fraction is 1000 Kelvin. So, we know that N V equals 1 by N V equals 0 is given by exponential, we can write minus h c nu bar by k t. So, this is, we can write exponential, we will put the values. So, this is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 times the speed of light, that is 3 times 10 to the power 10 and times the frequency which is 2890. So, we will divide this by k that is 1.38 times 10 to the power minus 23 and the temperature that is 1000 Kelvin. So, if we do this math, the answer we get is approximately 0 0.1. Six.